Hello there and welcome. My name is Kylie Kane and this is episode 19 of Baldur's Gate on the Verzian Chronicles podcast. If you're new here, go back and listen to episodes 1 through 18. They're each about an hour long and you will get a lot of fun and useful information as we proceed in these quote unquote proceedings. Now, we got to do the plugs first, as we always do as we make our way back to Cloakwood for this episode. As we finished off the Archdruid in the last episode, and, um, well, it's a good, it, it, it was a good time. It was a solid time, a solid experience, and um, a very fun fight, all in all, all things considered. I'm just realizing there's parts of Baragost I haven't explored on this playthrough, which is weird. Uh, but hey, we're 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 not we're not going to talk about that. It ain't worth talking about. Uh, it'll take me 72 hours to travel to Cloakwood proper. So um, as we begin our travelings over there, before we click that button to go to the rest of Cloakwood, uh, I want to quickly give my plugs out. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at twittercom theverzian where you can find out sometimes ramblings. Most of the time, I don't really post there often. But uh, I post there often enough. Um, lately, I've been posting, if you're watching this episode while it's uh, relevant, um, you will have found that I will. Uh, I have been working on uh, learning Zelda Ocarina of Time Randomizer. Um, so uh, I'm trying. My goal is to get that under a five-hour time frame, uh, a full run, and um, I'm currently working. Uh, I just actually started a seed that I am I'm quickly abandoning for episode two, but uh, I'm learning new tricks. I've already learned the basement skip in uh, the Deku Tree. I've learned power uh, crouch stabbing. I've learned, what was the other one, ground jump? I've learned a lot, a couple tricks there. Um, also getting better with my movement, getting better with, like, the... Um, the aiming for the aiming mini games and like the uh, horseback archery and the other mini games and uh it's a lot of fun so that's uh, I, I talk about that over there i talk about some of the other projects i'm working on such as i'm working on a on a game i'm working on you know so many projects going on um if so you want to go check out the twitter you can also check out the youtube channel at youtube.com slash uh, I think it's, I actually don't know what the slash is for the YouTube channel. I just know, yeah, just look up the Verzian Chronicles uh, YouTube channel and you can find me on there. I'm sure I will pop up uh, where you can find uh, my live streams, where I live stream my adventures um, in the, uh, where, well, whatever I'm playing. Sometimes I'm doing mud, sometimes I'm doing, um, Oh, what am I doing? I'm doing a lot of stuff. That's 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 what I'm doing. I'm doing I'm doing stuff, right? I'm doing stuff, doing things, and uh, overall, just having a lot of fun with it. Um, otherwise, uh, what else do I got? I got a TikTok that you can follow. I don't post there very often. I do uh, post there occasionally, um, but I do have a TikTok, and that's pretty cool. I guess I don't understand how these kids use TikTok. Uh, it's weird for me. I don't get it. So I just, uh, when I do use it, I talk about RPGs and like stuff like what we're doing now, uh, Baldur's Gate. Uh, what are the other things we've got going on? Um, of course you can watch my Zooter runs on my Zooter learning on YouTube. Um, I already said Twitter. Oh yeah, check out the Patreon where you can find Patreon exclusive episodes like a video version of this very episode, including all this rambling I'm doing now. You can check that out. It's only one dollar to get access to the video versions of all of the episodes. Plus, plus, and here's the super important thing. Plus, you get access to extra content. I do a retro suffering podcast where uh, I actually did highlight last time. Sadly, I've lost that save. So we will be moving on to Gojo. 19 i think it's go age, age whatever it's 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 another game uh, a friend of mine pointed out to me that i should try so i'm gonna give it a shot um there is also going to be a final fantasy 5 final fantasy 5 four job fiesta run that'll be exclusive for the patreon it'll be an audio only podcast as well as i play through that and do the four job fiesta um so that you you, know, you can look forward to that um 
And uh, we've also got a World of Zine playthrough. If you're into Might and Magic, we've got a World of Zine playthrough over there that just got started recently. Uh, those take those are about also about an hour long. Um, those come in audio only format and in video format, depending on which one you like. And uh, of course, those will be added to a playlist on YouTube eventually when I get to it. Um, that, of course, the patrons will have an exclusive link to. Um, other than that, uh, check out my Discord. You can come in. It's fairly quiet most of the time, but you can find out what I'm doing, uh, how I'm doing, um, keep track of where my depression sits, and uh, <laughs> otherwise just keep track of where I'm going and how I'm handling things. Uh, is there anything else off the top of my head that I need to kind of bring up? I don't quite recall, to be honest with you. But anyways... Either with that said, uh, again, check there. There's multiple things, places I'm, I, I kind of sub exist in. There's multiple places you can go to find me, and uh, I highly employ you to do that. Well, and uh, of course, this this series is funded by my patrons. Um, you know, not completely, duh. But um, for like I said, a dollar a month, you can uh, get early access to the episodes. I try. I was at one point doing them like two to three weeks in advance. I'm now doing them more or less you get them like half a week or a week in advance, something like that. Um, but as the summer progresses and I get a little bit more time, uh, maybe we'll do more episodes and have more episodes come out uh, sooner on the on the Patreon. That's the goal. Um, and uh, maybe one day if the Patreon actually, if we grow, if the channel grows to that uh, amount, I don't know if it will. I'm not, you know, looking into that. Uh, but maybe if it does, you know, we'll do uh, other things as well. Um, like... Uh, yeah. Well, once the Baldur's Gate's done, we'll, we'll go from there. Anyways, back to the game. Plugs done. Let's travel to Cloakwood. Part three. And we've been waylaid by two Weaverns, Wyverns, uh, as we attempted to come in this way. I don't know how strong Wyverns are, uh, but we're handling them fairly well. It looks like uh, Emowyn is definitely hurt. We're moving her out of the fight real quick. Uh, and having her turn around and assault the wyvern she can hit as the rest of the party turns and assaults the other wyvern. Imowen is dead, sadly, so we're going to have to do a load, sadly, because uh, we do not want Imowen to die. I don't know why. I guess she got poisoned, but she got hit hard. She was getting taken like 60, 70 damage a pop. Uh, what am I doing going to this edge of town when I can go right over here to this edge of town and get the same results? Of course, that's why we quick save when we do, uh, so we can do things like that. Let's uh, let's pull the map up and actually click Cloak Whip 3. Uh, we got waylaid by bandits again. Uh, waylaid by Ettercaps this time, who are definitely going to kill Zan. Because that's fun. What is going on? Maybe maybe I go to Cloakwood 2. Maybe because it's, it's 72 hours to Cloakwood 3, so that might be why. Ettercaps, once again! It took one day and a few hours for us to find Ettercaps. What I'm going to do here is we're going to do a magic missile on the far Ettercap. Uh, we're going to have the have my boy um, Kaldrick start off with a... Uh, start off with a chant... We'll have my girl, um, Emowen, start attacking the same one that my boy over here, Zan, is attacking. We'll get Wasad to pop in with a sword on that one there. Uh, what kind of sword is he wearing? That's the Spider's Bane plus two. This is the Longsword plus one. We'll have Longsword plus one on that. And uh, she should be using the Quarterstaff plus one on that Edder Cap right there. No! All right, Zan's getting attacked, so we're going to move Zan out of the fighting range real quick. Chant went off like a champ, and uh, Zan is now not using his weapons. Where are they at? There it is. I found it. I forgot to equip him with his sword and his and his daggers, actually, which is bad. Um, absolutely frustrating that I forgot to equip him with his daggers. So he was going in literally... Uh, not doing anything. Uh, we did slow poison on Zan. I uh, think so. I think that's how that works. Um, and now we're going to continue assaulting the Edder Caps. And maybe this time come out a little better on top. As we begin to assault the Edder Caps here. My girl over here needs to pull out her Wachowski. And I think she needs to move back and pull back out her bow. 
back here and begin assaulting that one there as the rest of the group move on to the next one and kill another one, dropping a Jade Ring. These Edder Caps are only dropping... Oh, they're dropping 650 experience as the group is now properly assaulting the Edder Caps with no issue. Zan, I know you're weak. I get it. You're tired. I get it, buddy. I know. I understand how tired you are. As we take out the third or, or the fourth and final Edder Cap, and I think I'm gonna have uh, her pick up these. We pet. We've also we found we pick up some gold. We found a water star gem and a green stone gem that we're gonna pick up on my boy, and pick up that on her. As we defeat the final Edder Cap, 650 experience across the board. As we move back into our travels, another 44 hours remain. Two days, a day and 20 hours as we finished. Uh, and we're done. So we're going to quickly quick save it and do a rest. It will then become nighttime. It's okay. We're going to rest one more time for daylight because I prefer the daylight as we enter Cloakwood Part 3. And I realize that there's still stuff in Cloakwood Part 2, so 16 hours or more as we travel to Cloakwood Part 2. 16 hours rest until morning, and we're fine. Now, we have explored most of Cloakwood, but there's a large portion of Cloakwood we can't see. So we're going to move our characters towards that portion. And that the goal again is our, our goal right now is to clear the rest of the remaining shadow druids out of the cloakwood. Uh, assuming that they are in this section of the cloakwood. I don't know. Maybe I maybe they are, maybe they aren't. We found a cave in the cloakwood, which may have more things to explore that we can go into. Uh all right, so we're going to save it outside the cave, of course, and go inside the cave. It is just a set of baby, baby, baby wyverns attacking a Peter of the North. Um, Peter of the North says, move along, friends. Nothing to see here. Just a humble, humble was been doing a little splunking. And Jahara, Jahara completely says then, she goes, accompanied by a horde of hum, equally humble baby wyverns, state your purpose here, lest I follow my duty as nature's servant and determine it for myself. I can then have, I have to have options. Um... I'm going to say, it's an odd place to meet a woodsman. Are you not afraid of these baby wyverns behind you? Peter of the North says, You just don't know the subtleties of wood and wood-related activities. These creatures are docile, and it's well worth the risk. Even during the darkest of caves, it can be a rewarding experience for the woodsman that knows how to handle themselves. Why, um, subterranean trees can yield the best material for carving uh, ornamental things. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say the option. Subterranean trees, are you quite sure you know what you're talking about? Certainly! I have, have I given you cause to doubt me? Of course not. Everything is as it should be. These are uh, nothing untowards about me or my wife, or I mean nothing towards nothing untowards about these wyverns. Are you implying something? Do your actions not seem odd to you? Um, not at all. It's not uncommon for a woodsman to seek the comfort of natural caverns and um oh oh to blaze us with it. I can tell by your questions you suspect me of lying, and I tire of this ruse. I am not a simple woodsman. I am training these beasts to serve as guards, and now you've interrupted me. I shall never have them ready for the mine. Your presence has agitated them. They'll be unmanageable for days now. Perhaps perhaps I can placate them with meat. Your meat. I was about to feed them that stupid delivery boy. If it weren't for him, you'd be facing one more wyvern, but he can wait. This will be a feast for them. And we begin to battle uh, this group of baby wyverns, and I'm not quite sure how the fight's going on. The baby wyverns are not really handling their own right now. As I then turn the party to focus on Peter, who takes one hit, two hits. Uh, my boy is in, in trouble right now. We're going to drink a potion on my boy there. Ah, no. How did you die? Alright, so what we're going to do is... What did he just do? Armor of Faith? It was Armor of Faith, wasn't it? Yep, it was Armor of Faith. Well, reload! Uh, for some reason, Khalid is taking a lot of damage in these fights. He is properly equipped, right? I think so, yes. It looks that way. I'm double-checking my gear here. Um, Rasad, are you set up to use your... Let me check out your stuff, Rasad. Rasad, customize uh, script... I'm going to prefer melee weapons. I thought I did that last time. All right, on three, two, one, we're going to enter the cavern again. And um, it's an odd place to meet a woodsman, subterranean trees. The action does not seem odd to you. And now we can assault them. 
let's begin with a little bit of love from Zan. And what we're going to do is I'm going to cast a fireball. <coughs> Zan, come over here then, buddy. Thank you. Cast a fireball up there. Thank you. Please, aid me. All right, Rasad got hit with the fireball, but that's fine. Everything else is badly injured. We can do a potion of... Actually, let's do the potion of invulnerability. Boom, a potion of invulnerability. And then pop the potion of... Why did Rasad die? Oh, Rasad took poison damage. Oh, I didn't know Wyverns could do poison damage. Okay. Um, as we enter the cave again and kind of stress our actions a little bit here as we kind of figure out what I want to do. Um, we could do armor melt. We could do bark skin. That might help. We could do chant. We can resist fire and cold. We can do ward of protection. Let's cast armor of faith really quickly. Right, that'll help me a lot. Let's then cast Bark Skin as the group begins to the, begins their fight against the uh, the enemy up, up, up before us. Uh, we're taking a lot of damage up front, but that's okay. No! Bark Skin went off like a charm. Uh, Peter of the North avoided a hit from the uh, no! from one of the attacks. Khalid takes poison damage, which is definitely aggravating. Uh, Khalid is in bad shape, so we're going to do... Uh, let me double check here. Nope, where is the spell I need to... I need to cure his wounds. Uh, I'm going to cast Bless on him. No! Perhaps... No. All right, so we healed his wounds. He's still taking no. poison damage, uh, which is bad. And we we no. drink a potion. We do another potion. So Ryan would be proud of your action. All right, how many? No. We've got one baby wyvern remaining, and uh, looks like our group is doing well enough as is. What is my boy doing? Why is he not attacking? him up there. Get in there and begin assaulting him with your weapons of steel and awesome. Uh, Zan. Oh, wait. Zan. No, I don't want you doing that. I want to see here. I want you attacking him. Thank you. Uh, Zan is using knives. Let's get you in there as well on this guy. Ah, never mind. He dies. And uh, that was 1,500 experience. Plus, let me check, 450 per each wyvern. So not bad. Not a bad fight. Sad that it took so long for us to get it right, uh, sadly. But it that is a not a bad fight. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start picking up the gear. Of course, Zan needs to pick up the uh, identifiable gear. And then we'll have a greater potion of healing. And then what we'll do is have my boy there pick up the rest of the stuff all right so we've got ted or above us and a trap door we're exploring the rest of the caravan and we're talking to ted or ted or goes please spare my life you've come to rescue me yes uh who are you my name is ted or and i run delivery service this, this man obviously ordered a wyvern egg by his own words a new bigger breed of some sort he was still in my room in the friendly arm inn after the delivery, preparing to leave when he came and kidnapped me into this rotting hole, accusing me of giving him the wrong egg. I don't know how I mixed up deliveries. I cannot say where his wyvern egg went, and I wouldn't he wouldn't tell me what he got instead. I lost all my papers, and he destroyed all my remaining deliveries. Well, that would be helpful to know, though. I'm not I'm sure I am sure not everyone is ordering wyvern eggs. No, not at all. I had all sorts of eggs. And things and well, it doesn't matter anymore. I quit. I was a delivery man for long enough now, traveling from north to south and even further, having all those eggs and special items being taken care of them. Some of it need hot, some of it need to be cooled, and all of almost all need to be moved carefully. Try to do that on a dusty, bumpy road through wind and rain. I have only one thing left. It seems a preserved egg of some sort. I was to bring it to some mage, but I lost the name together with my papers. Um, I, I don't want to have this anymore. These deliveries only bought me bad luck. Take it. Maybe it's helpful to you. 
Well, why not? It is preserved in some way. It's a usable thing, not a living egg. At least I think so. You can still give it back if you want. Just not to me. I cannot believe you came in the moment you came. He was threatening to feed me to his wyvern in the last days. But I really think he would have done it today. Oh, I thank you. There's nothing else I can give you. Only this magical egg-like stone. Just try not to make it too hot. That was the only advice coming with me. There he runs, thinking life was unfortunate for him, says Zan. Oh, see, seems we are cl cl cleaning up after that fellow quite a bit, says Khalid. Rasad says, we saved a lot others a lot of trouble by this encounter. For the delivery man as well as for anyone who would have to face these wyverns. Emuin says, who would want to bet we'll meet that misdirected wyvern? Jahara says, the will of men is not to be underestimated. Some succeed by enforcing nature the way they want. It is not sure the wyverns would have turned against their tamer in time. It was good we ended this evil game. Theodore then goes, I, I can't wait to get out of here. In fact, I'm gone now. Thank you for your help. Bye-bye. And Theodore runs off. He said the mage was supposed to get it might be still on his way to Baldur's Gate. So, that may be useful in the future. Keep that in mind. We also have some other fun stuff here. Um, like a trapdoor. Let's go check it out. Yeah, the trapdoor contains one mithral ring. Beautiful. That's all the trapdoor contained. Wow, okay. And it is just a mithral ring. A ring made of small precious metal that is used as jewelry. It is a true silver ring. Uh, remarkable metal is supple and easy to work. It can be polished to shimmer like silver can never that never tarnishes and is stronger than steel. While not enchanted yet, it'll may it yet yeah, it might only be only a matter of time. Sorcerers like mithril artifacts due to their superior durability of the metal. Might be worthwhile to hold on to this ring. Beautiful. Let's put that on my boy over here. And let's move that to the gem bag. Gem bag. Gem bag. Boop. Boop. Alright, let's see. Who got the egg? This is an egg. It's some kind of egg the delivery man gave you for his rescue. It can be worn as an Eowyn stone. It looks quite powerful. You have the impression something is moving inside. An Eowyn stone? What does that mean? Uh, what does that do? Okay, hold on. Um, it didn't change anything for me, uh, weirdly enough. So I don't know what the egg does. If anyone knows what the egg does, please, please, please let me know. We have 24,000 gold. Okay, cool. Um, I might, I actually do know of a mage that could help me on this, on this prospect. Let's begin by identifying some stuff. We have the Poleaxe plus two, Kilther, a general in command of an elite unit during the Orc Fastings War several centuries ago. Kilther gained posthumous fame for his role in the eventual victory. During the Battle of Burning Cliffs, he prevented an Orc... Horde from flanking the main human force. Anticipating the orca strategies from previous battles, Kilther forced his men to march on foot, equipped with bows, halberds, and pole axes. When the orca's for forces raced out of the forest on the back of wargs, wargs, that's large wolves, basically, the human weapons brought the charge to an abrupt halt. The orcs were decimated, while the Silver Knights only lost 19 men, including Kilther himself. With their victory at the Battle of Burning Cliffs, the humans used the momentum to turn the tides of war. It was a 1d12 plus slashing weapon. Not bad. There's a bow here as well. Let's identify it. It is the Vibra Death, crafted from... Okay, that's awesome, and I wonder if Emoen can use it. It's crafted from the bone of an ice dragon of a barbarian tribe in Vasa. This powerful longbow increases, provides increased strength, damage, and accuracy. The resonant low hum produced after it each shot gave birth to its name. It's not usable by thieves, sadly. It's a plus three bow, plus three damage, speed factor plus five. Uh, five. It is a longbow, and uh, it is a sixth strength bow, which means... wait. Can Rasad use it? He can. It's not as strong as what he's using, but honestly, I kind of prefer... Let me double check this. Yeah, to hit that. This has a less hit. Let me put it on my boy here and see what this does. Um, The dead shot is actually better than it, than the Viber Death. Uh, the Viber de Damage plus two... Well, damage plus two. So, wait, why is this... Oh, it's got abilities. What are the abilities of it? Uh, arrow, arrow, arrow. Oh, Q. 
Okay, what is this one? This one have any abilities? No. Um, so why does does this? It does, yeah. Wow, for a ranged weapon, it's not bad at all. Okay, cool. So we've got him a decent ranged weapon when I need him to go ranged. Uh, we can sell the dead shot. Very nice. Of course, my girl can't use it, but she's got a short bow plus one. I'd really like to find a decent short bow for her. That would be really nice. So before we continue, let's do a resting inside the cave. Resting two twice time for eight, and now it should be sunlight outside. We rested for 16 hours on the first one and eight, and eight hours on the second attempt of the rest. And we have finished up that small segment of the of the uh, Cloakwood. Now we continue moving through Cloakwood. Stronger for our actions and looking for other Shadow Druids. I think we may have cleared the area of Shadow Druids. So we may be worrying more about them, less about them here and more about them in the future as we come back across the Arch Druids area. Um, Alright, so we mount someone named Isfella. Uh, we can't save it. You are friends of Jahara, are you not? She is of a druidic order that follows Sadiad, one of three archdruids. Well, I do not share that philosophy. It is because of the pacifist doctrines that atrocities against nature continue, like the fool in the northeast that entraps animals and enslaves them for his petty, petty tasks. As the shadow druid entraps animals and enslaves... Oh, that's probably talking about, like, literally talking about the guy in the cave. As a shadow druid, I fight so nature is left untouched. There's no room for society to live alongside. This must be enforced through fear. The removal of naive taint to hear in her kind of sown. To hear then says, Or is it because of your extreme doctrine your more atrocities against nature are performed as an act of revenge and retaliation to your cruel misdeeds? You and your blasted kin harden the great mother more than civilization that you seek to oppose. You have done by this by antagonizing nature with one of its most wondrous creations, the humankind. You shall be dealt with swiftly, as will the animal enslaver. Uh, like you, we have the strength and will to oppose him. You'll find no slaves here, says Isf Isfia. Jahira. Isfia says to Jahira. Only willing warriors, both humans and beasts. But I can see that it is true. You are among those who lie willingly about us. You want to kill me and prove yourself the stronger? Do it. But then know that by your hand, a true defender of nature shall be slain. And we begin the fight. Uh, she is immediately hurt fairly badly. Casted Fairy Fire, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think Jahira can learn Fairy Fire. Let me double check this. Uh, can she learn Fairy Fire? Where is that at? I thought it was a level one spell. Entangle, Shillelagh, Firebolt. Ooh, she can learn Firebolt. What's that do? 1d3 damage. Not bad for a ranged attack. She also has armor of faith. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, let's put armor of faith on her, and she also has bless. I didn't realize she could do bless. Uh, sparks, which I've got on her right now. Alicorn Lance, which is a 3d6 piercing damage. Uh, that is a lot of damage for one attack. Don't see Goodberry as well, which is a five uh, one to hit point. I don't see Fairy Fire here. No, I don't see Fairy Fire at all. Zone of Sweet Air. No. Uh, okay, we got Harper's Call. Um, it's a Raise Dead spell that she can learn, and I don't see any other. I don't see Fairy Fire in here, so I don't know what it does. All right, continuing the assault, and uh, this is a fight that's that's going fairly simply. Uh, we are t we're doing a little bit of fire damage. She drops the an amulet, which can only be used by which can only be used by true neutrals. Uh, she drops studded leather, which is un unidentified. She drops a spear, unidentified, and a quarterstaff, unidentified. So of course, Zan will pick these up. And the fight is now over. 200 experience is gained, and Zan has more stuff to identify. We identified a studded leather plus three. We've identified a armor of thorns plus four, and we're out of identification spells, so that is fine. We'll rest and save, of course, after we rest and do some more identification spells. The Heart of the Woods is one of them, and I'll read these off in just a minute after I after I get them identified. Uh, 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 spear level 2 of Firebrand. Just quick save, of course. We Tread get... lightly. 
You must we show respect it well, as well in there. House. Uh, we have... Okay, we have a couple arrows plus one, which is fine, and some arrows of frost. And, alright, so what do we got? A poleaxe, which is a decent weapon for him. It's a 4 to 15 damage weapon. That's not a bad weapon for instead of his. That is much better than... Uh, I gave it to him. Him being Rashad, uh, much better than his Rashad's Talon. Rashad's Talon. Uh, we can't, nobody can wear the Armor of Thorns. The sh sh studded armor. Wait, he can wear studded armor? Studded leather? Really? I was unaware he could wear studded leather. Okay, cool. We finally got some studded leather armor for... We got some armor for my Sun Soul Monk, which puts him at a negative four uh, armor class, making him one of the best defended in, uh, people on my group, honestly. Not bad at all. Nobody can wear the armor of thorns, and it looks like uh, acid resistance... Uh, Heart of the Woods is the carving of this amulet's peak of life and draw power drawn from Sylvanas. There's one unmistakable runic mark, the symbol of Kuladar, the famed runic shrine in the far north. Though clearly ancient, the charm still glistens like it was new. Its power must lie within its resilience. Upon closer inspection, you notice some small signs of wear. Perhaps its power is not etern as eternal as the gods it pays homage to. Uh, he can actually wear that, but not. it's probably not better than his, um, his amulet currently are. We also have a Spear 2, which is a Firebrand Spear, um, who a lot of people can use. It's not as good as what he's using. Uh, not as good as what she, what Khalid's using. And we're going to check all of our characters to see if it's better than what they're using. It is not, sadly. Uh, we're getting reds across the board. Fa Thacko, the damage is just not high enough. 1d6 plus 2 plus 1d6 fire damage. That is, uh, a, that is up to 12 up to 14 damage versus up to 6 damage crushing, honestly. But it raises the Thacko plus 2 because no one knows how to use it. So I'm actually going to put it on uh, Jahira, even though it's slightly weaker than what she's got. And I just think that might be a better idea. Um, looking at the weapons I have in my inventory here to see if anyone else has got a better equip for this. Uh, protection from low-level spells. Um, you know what? Because what we want, we need it equipped. Um, plus four. Yeah, no, this is not a bad setup, to be honest with you. All right, so we have a decent setup now. We're going to save it. And, um, yeah, I think this is this map cleared. There's a little area to the south, south, to the greater southeast. So we'll go explore that. As we walk through the Forest of Cloakwood, it's really pretty. And I, I do always want to mention how pretty these maps are. These maps are absolutely beautiful. Um, and I, I'm always at awe, in awe about how pretty these maps can be. Well, there's also a uh, guy named Faldor, and I think he was a character we could have picked up. Again, does not really matter here as we approach the limits of the map. And finish our explo explore explo exploitation. Exploration is the word I'm looking for. And we found a black bear. A group of black bears. That same group of black bears that we were trying to avoid earlier. Uh, I'm assuming an evil party would probably get attacked by them. But since Jahira is in the party, that's not happening. There was one encounter... Uh, earlier that I'm curious if I missed and I don't quite remember where it was. Uh, we can, I think we can leave this map now. Uh, yeah, it looks that way. We can leave this map with no, with no consequences. Um, so we'll do that. But there was a, um, let me look here. I think I need to head west. I think that's the idea. Um, there was a map that we went to that had like a shapeshifter in it that I was really afraid of at early level. And I kind of want to go find that guy again since he turned into three bears. And that might be a useful amount of experience as we level our guys up. Uh, so I might go check that out as my cats do some crazy stuff in the background. That's something you can almost always get a handle on uh, what's going on with my cat. So there is... I think it ain't Pedville. 
It's not Peldval. It may be Pe Peldval, but that's 64 hours away. I'm not going to rush to that. Um, I don't quite remember. I do remember an ogre, a female ogre in the uh, fields below Friendly Army Inn that we probably could take now. Like, I, I honestly think, but that's, again, that's you know, 40 hours away, so we're going to head into Cloakwood Part 3. All right, heading into Plugwood Part 3, it is. it took 16 hours, so I think it's a good time for us to rest for 8 and begin our exploration of the Cloakwood. Again, this map is a very foresty map. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary here as we begin to, as we see what looks to be a Shadow Druid. And it immediately confuses Jahira, who begins to assault the party, and he begins to run away. Uh, he cast Dimensional Door to get away. He is now injured. Jahira is now un is now no longer. Um, it, it, what's funny is he is injured, definitely injured. I wonder if he's going to talk to us right at the end. Um, he casted an Entangle. Did he cast the Entangle or Jahira cast the Entangle? Uh, yeah, no, uh, he did cast the Entangle. Tried to cast it on on. Um, he's casted it twice now, and he's run away. But. The funny thing is, is our ranged characters are handling it very well. 650 experience, just a dagger, which we'll let uh, my boy over here pick up as we wait for these entangle spells to, to fall off of us. I am just kind of shocked that he had so many uh, issues, I, th I guess is the word, um, w with this with this setup uh, where he attacked us. He attacked us, remember? He, he, he was the one who attacked us. Um, and it always shocks me uh, how that ends up, ends up working against um, the people in question. As we, again, we wait for the entangle because okay, I want to always want to explore the southeast portion of a map first, or at least I try to. As the entangle begins to slowly fade away, I can't save until the entangle's gone, and I got to be careful not to walk through it uh, because it can still entangle us. Uh, we found Cloakwood, Druids of Cloakwood. Strangers, get away from here. To the treehouse. Maritha, rescue her. Don't bother me. Even when dying, he's so foolishly noble. Onward, Kaeldrick Hathen. We cannot allow these shadow fu filth to kill him. You dare intrude on our sacred rituals, outside up, and you've dragged one of these false druids with you. For that, you shall die, interloper. And we have a fight with some more druids. Now, they are far enough away where I think a fireball might be a good idea as we turn off the AI. Get Jahira the fuck out of there. Rasad, also get the fuck out of there. Zan, do your fireball, baby. Zan, fireball, baby. Fireball, baby. First fireball did hit. No problems cast it again. There are five health signatures there. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is have uh, my boys begin assaulting with a bow at range. Just continue assaulting Beedor. I don't. I want my non-ranged individuals to not really be worrying so much about it. And another fireball. And that was a solid hit on the second fireball. As we look into our bag here, major fire resistance, major broken fire resistance, ring of the princes. Um, can I equip the wand of frost here? I probably can. I don't know how it works. 8d6. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Wand of frost. Do the Wand of Frost on that guy there and begin assaulting it. It's okay. We've got our Rangers doing stuff. Ray of Cold instantly hitting. Um, it's a range of, it's a column of ice. It affects one creature but does 8d6 damage. Uh, and it looks like their target, their leader has died a fairly ignoble death. Somebody is sitting there in the middle. We'll cast another cold. They're actually trying to heal each other up right now as we begin to uh, do another ray of cold. And now I think it's time for the party to get involved. Go! Party begin assaulting as the strongest druid is now out of the picture. Jahira is got, got hurt there, which is fine. It's okay. 
and their cloakwood druids are now near death. We can then do another cold attack on another one of the druids from the back. Not bad as the group continues to assault. We have these two in the back continuing to fight for the for the health of the party as we begin to have them assault more. Another wand of cold on the almost dead one, I think is going to be the way to go. And who gained a level? Somebody gained a level. I heard it. Uh, looks like Jahira just gained a level 27 frost damage. This might be a, a, a weapon we sell and rebuy. And the druids have finally fell. Just like that, the druids are down. Look e there. All right, Zan, you're going to pick up the unidentifiables, and actually you're going to pick up the daggers as well since you can use them as we have uh, my other guy pick up the rest of it. So, as this has happened, Jahira goes, Beador, you fool! How could you be so reckless? Lie down and allow yourself to be healed. Okay, Jahira. Jahira then walks up to Beador and then heals his failing body, I guess. All right. He is now awakened. Beador goes, Jahira! Jahira, is that you? I thought I'd never see your face again after, after you left. <coughs> thought I told you to lie down, foolish man, and preserve your strength. Do not speak, especially not of the past. You, you've not changed over all these years, Jahira. Have you been do how have you been doing all this time? H Hello, Beardor. It's good to see you again, says Khalid. Ah, uh, my greetings to you, Khalid, as well. <coughs> it appears my question has been answered then. Enough of this nonsense, Beardor. We were sent by Siniad to look for you and this woman, Maritha. That's what we will attempt to do. By Sylvanas. Praise you and Siniad both. Please, Jahira, you must free her. There's a bridge over the river nearby. Cross it and go back south. Find the treehouse. She was... <coughs> just taken there. To be tortured by the Undarth. One of the Shadow Druids. Please, hurry. We will try our best, Beador. You stay here and try not to move around too much. Come, Keldrick. We must teach these heretics, heretics a few harsh lessons. And 500 experience granted to us as we have succeeded now uh i do love that ice ability that is absolutely dope and we have a few things to identify let's identify the spear plus one which is just a standard spear we also have a piece of leather armor which is just leather armor plus one looks like we've got some stuff to sell very cool looking through my list here Double checking to see if I've actually learned all of these spells. I think I have. Okay, cool beans. And we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yay! We did it. All right, so continuing to move through the cloakwood. And I think it's a good time for us to rest because uh, it's raining. Uh, we've rested for eight hours and everyone is now healed very solid we cannot save during combat so looks like there is a combat going on somewhere but it has now passed i don't know what's going on with that combat uh continuing our way northwest or northeast i said southeast earlier I meant southwest uh we come across a bridge and i don't want to go across the bridge because i'm pretty sure that goes to the shadow druids fight so i want to explore this side of the landmass uh as we continue through the picturesque beautiful picturesque area of cloakwood with beautiful gray or greens oranges white trees even uh probably cottonwood trees they make me sick they actually make my wife sick too it's no fun as we continue exploring this area and i'm pretty certain i've explored all of it so to the bridge we go Woohoo! we are doing fairly well on this adventure so far i must say that this is one of those games that moves simultaneously at a quick pace and a glacial pace because there's so much going on. Black Talon enforcers are in front of me here, uh, which is absolutely frustrating as we look to see here. What is Dire Charm? It works against one creature. I'm looking for to see if something works against all. Um, let's do Color Spray on the group and have the rest of the group 
Fall back. Zan, do your thing, buddy. All right, let's pull the group back a little bit. Have Zan walk forward and begin to cast his color spray on the enemy. And we had some unconscious. We had at least one unconscious with Zan actually getting hurt in the process. Zan, I want you to move to the back for now as the rest of the group moves forward into combat and begins to fight the Black Talons. Black Talons take a ton of damage from Rasad. One down, the second Black Talon, who is still awake, is still well, awake. We're going to reactivate the AI so the AI can do their job. Kaldrick is getting uh, a little flustered here, not understood, not really understanding what he needs to do as we begin to take out the un un uh, the unaffiliated ones here. I'm going to have Zan actually begin attacking as well. Uh, Party AI again taking over and letting us do our bidding. I love how the Party AI does actually do its job in this in this sort of encounters. And the Black Talon Elites are dead. Very solid. All right, let's check out... Uh, we're going to check out the bodies, and Zan interrupts us, as he always does. He says, what is your goal in life? Why do you ask? I know it's difficult to convey in a few phrases, but bear with me. You remember we talked about fellow adventurers and the recognition of our exploits. I've been thinking about it for a while. You know, I might be wrong, but it seems our every step is directed towards achieving immortality, one way or the other. I would like to think on this, but I would also like to know your thoughts. So do all people. Writing books, helping people, reaching for power. So all people do is for this purpose. It might be. I wonder if it's another futile pursuit, says Zan. But in any case, thinking on it may lead us somewhere. May, shall we compare notes later today or tomorrow, perhaps? That is, if we're still alive. I don't disagree there, buddy. We're picking up all the arrows to my girl. And um, yeah, we're just going to pop those arrows over there as we clean out this bandit group here. Uh, also going to pick up the gold here. Pick up the the. Uh, we're going to pick up the rest of the gold. Pick up the bandit scalps that we have now graciously obtained, and begin uh, one more bandit scalp. I am I much it. more at ease in the forest. Okay, thank you, Zan. I'm sorry, buddy. Um, let's pick up. Let's see here. She is in full on her inventory, so let's pick up. We found splint mail, by the way, so that's pretty cool. Which uh, is one of those things that just might be... Uh, I don't think it's better. No, it's it's up at a two. Let's see if Splint Mail... Nope, Splint Mail is worse on both accounts. Pretty sure nothing they had is worth a, a dip. Arrow of Ice. We now have 40 arrows of ice and 40 arrows plus one. Let's pop those up into our inventory up top. We're also going to drop a couple of these bundles of bows, a bundle of arrows on the ground so we have more inventory space and can begin to move forward. Um, oh, Rasad is, is over-encumbered. He cannot move. Oops. Apparently this splint mail is too heavy for him, so we're going to remove some of it off of his person so he can join the party. Uh, one thing we probably need to do, I think, now more than ever is... Oh, shit. Guards, 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 guards. Multiple guards, one, two, three, four, five guards. As um, this is probably bad, let's check his inventory. Let's check our boy's inventory here and replace this with a wand of fear as we cast it over there. And the group is now feared as we can begin our assault on the the uh, the the guards who are assaulting us. Come on, come on, come on. Guards are assaulting, attacking, but they're not really doing any damage. Uh, Zan, I want you to cast fear again, please. Thank you. And that worked. One guard is now dead. We can now refocus the party on another guard. As everybody just chips in as these guards are deathly afraid of us, which is kind of nice because that means they're not attacking us and we can just chase them around and do some sort of damage. Cold ice damage from Emuin, eight damage from Rasad. And uh, I think Zayn actually got a hit in there for about 10 damage. Uh, this last one is about to fall. 
I think I think if we could hit him, that would be great. But we are missing like we're just missing a lot of attacks because they're moving around. Missile damage from Emowin now takes out that one there. We're going to refocus on another one of these fleeing guards as they continue to flee. And we continue to do our damage. I do love this because this is a tactic that we that was used on us early game. Uh, and now we get to turn it around on the enemy, which is really nice. Uh, the equipment that they have is not that great. And they are leading us in a bit of a circle. Uh, it looks like Emowin's doing 98% of the damage, and that's fine. Let's have the party regroup right here quickly. We can't save during combat. And the party immediately begins to assault the final guard. Missile damage hurting the guard pretty hard. Uh, but the guard is still feared. I'm hoping they're not taking us into another encounter uh, because they are feared. And they took us into another encounter. That sucks. We're going to immediately cast fear over here as well. And the wolves are now feared as well. And it looks like the group is now actually doing some... Just just taking out these wolves fairly well. Uh, Keldrick cast a... Keldrick's fighting the wolves by themselves. One of the wolves is dead. As the guard is still running and the rest of the group is now attacking them. The wolves are attacking two of the group. As the rest of the group slowly and surely tries to chip away at the guard who is fleeing. The guard is now dead. And it looks like the party can celebrate. Um, let's have everyone return over to the group here as we pick up these items. And we're we'll grab the entire party. One, two, three. Uh, only 65 experience as a group. Khalid is, oh, is encumbered and slowed, which is sucky. I think everybody's encumbered, like, just in a bad way. So it might be a good idea for us to travel back to town at this point. Um, I think that might be the best idea we had yet. So let's uh, do that as the as we uh, come across more guards. And continue our path. Khalid is slowed. Keldrick is slowed. Everybody is just slowed down right now, and it's funny as we slowly make our way towards the edge of the map no enemies in sight so we can make our way to Burgost and sell our goods <laughs> this was a good episode overall y'all uh we're gonna probably end back in Burgos where we started the episode uh i think that's just a good idea it's a 60 72 hour trip probably gonna get waylaid we did uh giant spiders no big deal as the party quickly deals with them uh, oh, Zan got hurt pretty badly. Um, and I want the party to focus on this one here. As I have Zan kite it! Go, Zan! Okay, Zan, I need you to use a potion, please. Cool. Zan, continue your running. Um, Emowin, attack this one. You, attack this one. Here. Have heard used the Wasashi. Wasashi. And, uh, we'll begin to assault this spider who's beginning to assault us. And then have the rest of the party go back to assaulting the spider. The, the only problem with traveling long distances, like multiple hours of range. Uh, come on. Come on, Emowin. Don't get poisoned. She got poisoned. She's fine. She's fine. I feel so cold. Damn it! No sorrow for those lost in righteous battles. I'm sorry, what the fuck? Aggravation because she died, even though I have multiple party members who can cure uh, stuff, so that's annoying. Anyways, uh, let's do Jahira here and level her up since she did get a level up. We get nothing. She gets two additional spells. Uh, one in level three, one in level two. And we're going to click done. There we go. And let's try this movement one more time. Uh, 72 hours uh, to Burgost. And we made it on one trip. No problems at all. As we continue to move forward. 
It took three days to get here to Burgost. And as we move to the to the final bit of this episode, I want to quickly thank my Patreons again for uh, for all of their support. It really does mean a ton to me uh, that you guys support me. I want to thank anyone who listens. Uh, I know I only I think it's an average listenership of somewhere in the general range of thirty, which is a small classroom. I'm just saying straight up, it's a classroom of people, which is something I find quite amazing uh, that that many people are interested in my content, uh, interested in listening to me talk, and uh, continue to 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 hang out in my spaces which is which is really nice um and i honestly would not have it any other way again massive massive thanks to anyone who um who finds my content entertaining uh because it does mean a ton to me as we uh sell all of the ill-gotten equipment we got here and um yeah i mean this was this was this was a good episode it's fantastic it was fun and I hope that I can continue providing entertaining content into the distant future. Um, again, if you liked this content, if you if you find this stuff entertaining, I uh, want you to let me know. Uh, let me know wherever you can. It does mean an absolute ton, and um, it does help the help the 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 show um, by sharing it with your friends. Uh, talking with your, you know, talk, talking to people, sharing it with your friends. It, it just all in all means an absolute ton. Uh, with that said, we finished this episode and, uh, we're saving it. So with that said, thank you again for listening and, um, I'll catch you on the next one. Try to have a fantastic day. Okay. Bye-bye now.